there's a popular quote going around at the moment. The person you will be in five years is based on the books you read and the people you hang around with today. This is quite true, but it applies to everything else as well. The person you will be in the future is based on everything you do today, the people you hang around with, but more so the people you listen to, the opinions you believe, the books you read or the videos you watch, all the information you take in, positive or negative, will affect your future. The workouts you do or don't do, that will show up in the future. The foods you eat today will affect your future on a visual and energy level. The same is true with your thoughts and information. What you feed your mind will shape your future. If all you do is take in garbage, guess what your future is going to be made up of? Commit to feed your mind with successful thoughts and surround yourself with those who have the same ambition. It doesn't matter where you get your information from. You may read. You may get it from podcasts or videos. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you keep feeding your mind every day. Your future self is begging you to show some discipline. Your future self is begging you not to be like the rest, to learn more than the rest, to work harder and smarter than the rest. Your future self is begging you to do the work now so you can enjoy later. If you don't feed your mind with success, it will rot with mediocrity. What you do every day will dictate your future. What you want out of life, you must put it in. If you want success, put it in there. If you want health and fitness, put it in. If you want peace and happiness, put it in. Your actions will equal your results. My mind is strong. I am strong. My thoughts are strong. My beliefs are strong. My life is strong. They say I can't. I can. They say I won't. I will. They say I'm not. I am. I am limitless. I am. I am. There's nothing I cannot be. Nothing I cannot do. Nothing I cannot have. In my mind, there are no limits. I am limitless! Dr. Cam Todd here with the Fresh Start Introductory Training on Basic Shipper Phone Scripts. Now we get all sorts of calls about scripts. Everybody wants a new script, magic script, the magic sentence to get more freight. But basically, it's going to come down to some basics. You hear me time and time and time again. Go back to the basics, but I'm going to put a little bit of a twist on it this time. Let's hear another introductory script. So basically, here we're going to come out the door with, Hello, may I speak to your traffic manager? Hi, my name is Dr. Cam with Fresh Start Freight. I represent a national premier truck brokerage and 3PO that specializes in motor carrier acquisition services for shippers across the country. We easily facilitate any type of freight movement for all your shipping needs. Here's a tip. You should give your customer a minute or a little bit of time to respond to the questions you're asking. I would suggest using a two-second pause in the, between the questions. Now, here's your questions. Here's some sample questions to put in your uh, tool belt for cold calls. Have you ever used a freight broker before? What is your process for me to start moving freight for your company? What's the frequency of shipping for your company? What do you require to ship truckload or LTL services or both? Do you have any dedicated lanes in which you require quotes on? Do you have any loads moving today? I could possibly send you a quote on. Do you have a suggested rate on this load? Send them your info. You have completed the initial code call regarding your services to the shipper. You should ask his or her permission to send your information to them. I would suggest some type of marketing sheet, PDF format. You need a fax or email it to them. Of course, you know we've already got that little, uh, got that little video that we use, that little uh, one one minute video, and then we have a shippers pack too. All right, you're going to need at least the company contact name, direct phone, email address, and don't don't be afraid to ask for the order. You've got to ask for the sale, guys. Got to ask for the sale. So what that looks like, you should continuously promote your services as the dialogue progresses with the prospect. You might just close the deal. On the follow-up, once you've sent him your information or her your information package, you should follow up within the next few days afterward to continue the dialogue you started to reinforce as their salesperson. Consistency. 
Shippers like consistency. Stay positive and aggressive on every call and let the traffic manager know you're hungry for the business. If you follow this pattern, you, he or she eventually will give you a shot at the freight. There's no doubt. Every freight broker or agent will eventually encounter the following situation. You need customers. You want to move the load. You're unsure about the freight rates. So what do you do? You start lowering your freight rates rather than negotiate with the customer. Many freight broker agents are afraid to stand by the rates because a single mistake assumption is, I'll lose my customers if I do not con concede to the freight rate. In reality, just the opposite will happen. The customer will sense a sign of weakness and continuously work you on prices from here on out. Here's how you keep the freight rate up. You're entitled to make money. You're entitled to make money for your service. A big mistake a lot of freight broker agents make is believing they should provide their customer service, little, little customer service or no compensation. They either have this mindset or for fear of losing or not going gaining the customer. What's a reasonable percentage of profit to make? Whatever you can convince your shipper that your service is worth. Your service has value. Confidence. If you want to make good profit on the loads, you have to believe the services you're performing are worth the cost. Lack of confidence in yourself, your services, or freight rates will come across as a sign of weakness to the customer. No apologies and no excuses. Never apologize for your price structure. If you believe your freight rates are good to go, assume the sale. You have to portray a mentality to your customer of it is what it is. Freight rates are determined by numerous factors which you do not control. Obtain the best rate from the carrier and freight transport, add your profit in, and present the rate to the customer. Okay? Don't be afraid to walk away from the deal. You hear me say this time, time, time again. I'd rather not do it than do it for free, right? Even if it's the shipper of your dreams and the shipper won't agree to the freight rate you have assigned in order to be profitable to the freight brokers, walk away from the deal. This position more often than not will get you the freight you're looking for as the shipper doesn't want to lose out on the rate. Negotiation time. The exception to the rules. You want to leave yourself an out from negotiating a lower price, but only if it's your best interest. In other words, if you will lower the price only if you discover there's a chance in, uh, change in the marketplace. What are the exceptions? For example, I will lower my freight rates when I find out there's an abundance of carriers in the market area of the consumer. You might consider offering a freight discount rate if the customer will assign more loads or dedicated lanes to you. Don't give away the farm, guys. If you appear too eager to negotiate a reduced rate, the shipper will view your services of no value and reduced value. One of my favorite negotiations that actually happens quite frequently in the industry is from a shipper who received a freight rate from a competitor who wanted this business but they offered to transport this freight with much cheaper freight rate. My customer tried to convince me that I should lower my fee but I refused to do business that with the rate that low. I was convinced my competitor would not be able to top, would not be able to provide a motor carrier for him. At the end of the day I was, I thought I, at the end of the day it was my competitor could not produce a motor carrier to transport the freight and he went up to my Friday. So that happens every day. Every day they think they can run it that cheap. Lighten up guys. You never want to let your negotiation become too tense. Always feel free to smile, inject some humor in the conversation, lighten up the mood. Lighten up the mood can ingratiate you with your shipper while also conveying your negotiating strength. If you do not appear to be making the negotiation extremely, if you don't appear to be taking the negotiation extremely seriously, your opponent may conclude that you're ready to move on and if you don't get the price you want. Which is just about like saying you just don't got, don't have it, uh, it's not that big a deal to you. Take a second to negotiate the freight rates, guys. Negotiating freight rates as a freight broker is very similar to that as an assets-based carrier, which you also are assets-based, so it's very, it's very important to learn the, the art of negotiation. Many freight brokers assume that the motor carrier has more negotiating advantage than the 3PL has. But like I've told you a thousand times at least, this would be true if the motor carrier wasn't an issue. They are. Freight broker advantages. Ability to, you have an ability to, to offer negotiated rates with the motor carriers. Personal contact with the relationship of the shipper. Knowledge of freight rate lanes and, and rates nationally by equipment type. The ability to provide a shipper discount during peak market periods if you need to through negotiation. Considerations. It is the responsibility of any freight broker to keep the market prices stable for your shippers. This does not mean you move the freight for cost or that you have to make small profit margins. It means that you have to provide your customer with freight rates based 
upon what your carrier network will transport the goods for and still return a profit. You have to understand the true cost of moving your freight. You must know how your need for expenses such as operating costs, surety bond, agent percentage, collections, and profit. There's always a chance that your customer will not be paying the freight bill. This would cause you to be upside down on the load. This means you have to make up these costs in other areas. The bottom line is you must understand the risk versus reward that exists on every load and that's you know, every load you run. So that when you are negotiating a freight rate, you know when to refuse services to a potential customer because there's simply no profit in the load. And finally, customer relationships, guys. Any successful business is one that benefits both parties. It must be a win-win. Must be a win for the shipper and for the carrier. For the potential customer and your freight broker and you as a freight broker too. If you have to work at creating good logistics relationship with the shipper and they refuse to respect the value of the services you provide them, you've got to move on to other customers. From the initial phone call to the prospective shipper, you have to set aside the ground you have to set the ground rules with regarding the expectations from both sides. Letting them know exactly what you can expect up front and what will help you propose in the freight. Ultimately, more of the freight quotes are accepted in the end, you'll initially provide a service value to the customer. And finally in this section, negotiating tips and tricks, guys. This is when they hear, it's called the flinch. This is when they hear how expensive something is. Okay, what? How much? Twenty-nine fifty. I've already got a better rate than that. This is one of the negotiating tips working for the shipper. Here's the customer asks if he not heard the price correctly, but a new benchmark is set that will now act as a basis of negotiating to follow. A concession typically follows the salesperson, something like, I have a carrier today for your freight right now if you can pay that much. The freight broker will stress that the carrier is available now for the freight rate. Freight agent, freight broker agent, I have a guaranteed carrier, whereas if you receive freight uh, rate from only my competition, I have a solution. Customer says, it's still more than the freight rate I currently have currently. The agent says, I can approach my carrier again for a better rate. But only if you're ready to move this one right now. So, you're meeting where the purchasing manager is talking about the representative in an automotive parts manufacturer. Customer says, look, we can only do business with companies that give us 60 day turns. If you can't, why are you wasting our time? Freight broker agents in danger that the negotiation will collapse before it's begun, before relationship is built, before all the facts are out in the open. And the inexperienced negotiator will either give a, a concession now or allow the negotiation to collapse. Now, some negotiating tests work better than others, but in the end, the success lies in the skill of who's applying them. A skilled freight broker agent will respond by saying, let's just put that aside for a moment and see if we can provide a solution for your transportation needs. So an experienced agent will say, let's just see if we can find you a truck. Don't worry about the price right now. Then splitting the difference. Get the other party to suggest you split the difference. What tips do you use? You want 5900 for this load? We only have a budget of 5400 It's a shame we can't do business for only $500 separating. Is there anything we can do? Freight agent. Really would like to move the load. Why don't we split the difference? How do you mean? Are you saying we can agree on the 5650 Or do we have to, to get this load moved? Absolutely. We'll schedule the truck. So that's making them 50 50. I mean, you can do that. Suggest the rate. They suggest the rate. Negotiate, guys. All right. Moving on to the next chapter. I hope everybody got something out of these negotiating tips and tricks.